Welcome to another video. I got this problem in an email request and it's been for a while, but I think it's better to just switch from number theory and all the mathematics Olympiad problems and just do some calculus in the classroom. Now, I know there were more than one problems in the email, but I'm just going to start with this one and I might do the next one another day. So what's the mission? It is to find the limit of this function and two possible ways. Use L'Hopital's rule if you know how to differentiate absolute value functions or just do the algebra by going back to the definition of the absolute value function. So let me know in the comment section what you see because what you see is what you get. <laughs> Let's get into the video. So the most important part of this is you being able to rewrite any absolute value function in terms of its um, piecewise um, nature. Well, that's terrible. Just rewrite the absolute value function as a piecewise function and you'll be able to take any limit you want to take. So let's just focus on the part that has the absolute value, okay? So let's do some work here. Look. The absolute value of x squared minus 9 is the same thing as the absolute value of x minus 3 and x plus 3. You see, this is no problem because it doesn't matter whether x is positive or negative. The relative position to 3 does not matter because you will get the same answer because addition allows the commutation of numbers, but subtraction does not. So the number inside might be positive or negative, depending on which one is bigger. So this is the one you want to focus on. And remember that the product of two, the absolute value of a product is the product of the absolute values. You want to know that. So this is going to be the same thing as absolute value of x minus 3 times the absolute value of x plus 3. Okay, remember I said we can ignore this. This is the guy that's going to be a problem. So you see this product can actually be what you see, or it could be the negative of what you see when x is less than 3. So recall that the absolute value of x minus 3 is equal to x minus 3 if x is greater than 3. Or it is equal to, so we have to do this, this piecewise function, this goes here, or it is negative x minus 3 if x, sorry, greater than or equal to 3 if x is less than 3, 3, hey, come on. So this is what you have to use to rewrite this limit. So there are two limits you have to take. You take one limit and then take another limit. Okay, otherwise you might be stuck. So I hope this makes sense. So this is the part that confuses and this is how you rewrite it. The absolute value of x minus 3 is x minus 3 when x minus 3 is greater than 0 and which results to greater than or equal to 0, which when you solve you get a, it's going to be x is greater than or equal to 3 and here it is when it's negative which is less than 0. x minus 3 is less than 0 means that x is less than 3 when you solve it. So we're going to go back here and say this is equal to the limit as x goes to 3 of, there are two equations now. The first one, so this guy here, we can write this as this x squared minus 9 can be written as two possible equations. We're going to take this one along with this one, so it's going to be x minus 3, x plus 3, when x is greater than or equal to 0. Sorry, 3 rather. The condition here. And the second one is going to be negative x minus 3 times x plus 3, when 
x is less than 3. So if we go back here to rewrite this, it's going to be a piecewise limit. It's going to be the limit as x approaches 3 of, let's go. The first part is going to be the top. The top is going to be this guy. It's going to be x minus 3 times x plus 3 over the cube root of x minus 3. So I rem when I started, the, I, what I should have done is I should have plugged in 3. You would have seen that you can't plug in 3 because you're going to get 0 over 0. That's the reason why this was a tough problem. Okay, I should always do that first, but I'm assuming you can, you've already gauged it and seen that there's no way you can plug in 3 into this function because this would be 9 minus 9 and this is 3 minus 3, which would give you 0. So that's why we're doing the simplification. So, and this is what we're going to use when x is greater than or equal to 3. And here, we're going to do the opposite one, which is negative x minus 3 times x plus 3 over the cube root of x minus 3. And that happens when x is less than 3. So you notice that the point of contention is at 3. So we're approaching 3, both from after we've gone past 3, greater than 3, which is from the right, and we're also approaching 3 from the left, which is the less than portion. So we'll be taking two one-sided limits, limit from the right and limit from the left. If the two of them are the same, the limit exists, and that's your answer. If the two limits don't are not the same, then the limit does not exist. And that's all you have to do. So now we take one-sided limits as x approaches 3. And we'll be good. So this is the first limit we're going to take. This one. We're going to say the limit as x approaches 3 from the right. It is from the right because we're approaching from numbers greater than 3. x is greater than or equal to 3. So if we're approaching this from the right, this is what we're going to take the limit of. It's going to be x minus 3 times x plus 3 over the cube root. Instead of writing cube root this way, I'm going to write it as x minus 3 to the 1 third. Okay. You see, this is easy because this can divide this. This is 1 raised to power 1. This is 1 third. If you subtract the two powers, you're going to end up with the limit as x approaches 3 from the right of this minus this will be x minus 3 raised to power 2 thirds. 2 over 3 times x plus 3. Okay, now the denominator is gone. The denominator was the reason we could not plug in 3. So now we can easily plug in 3. If you plug in 3 here, this is going to be 3 minus 3, that's 0. 0 times anything is going to be 0. So you end up with um, 0 multiplied by 6, which is going to give you 0. So the limit as you approach this point from the right is 0. We go here and do the same thing. Okay, if we take this limit, the same thing, limit as x approaches 3 from the left, it's just going to be the negative version of it. Um, it's going to be uh, minus x minus 3 to the 2 thirds times x plus 3. Well, it's the same thing. It's just going to be 0 again times 6. So we got 0, we got times 6, which gives us 0. So we've seen that the limit from the right is the same as the limit from the left. So the limit exists and it's equal to zero. So since the limit as x approaches 3 from the right is the limit as x approaches 3 from the left, which is equal to zero, um, the limit exists and it equals zero. Ta-da-da! Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.